If you enjoy the content, I would appreciate you hitting the subscribe button and checking out my socials. Anubis is the newest map introduced into the competitive pool. A map where the T side has acres of map control at the start of the round, allowing a team like Vitality, who has the highest win rate in tier 1 on the T side, to pick and choose what areas they want to pressure. Hey, I'm Smirk here, and today I want to look at Vitality and how they default and play on the T side of Anubis, so let's begin. But want to get individual training and CS classes for 30 days for 50 cents on your first month? Affirmative. Well, thanks to today's sponsor, Gosu Academy, you can. Yes, my friends, yes! Gosu Academy is the CS school where you can join frequent classes hosted by various pro players and coaches. In these classes, you can submit demos in the Discord to be reviewed and critiqued by the coaches, or join them in theory sessions on a map. And I will also be hosting some of these sessions myself. <laughs> On top of this, they host weekly scrims where you can jump into a 5v5 with coaches on both teams, helping you during and after the game. Our enemies tremble. This entire course is $29 per month, but again, you can try the course for pretty much free for 30 days by using code SMOKY at checkout, which equates to 12 classes. Now go on and rank up. <laughs> Let's begin with an overview of how they play Anubis. Vitality will typically start in a 2-2-1 formation, which may change if they want something different. But in this default formation, they will smoke house and beacon every round, denying visibility from the CTs. The house smoke will be done in spawn by Sphinx, and the con smoke will be done by Zyru. Afterwards, they will make their way to their designated positions. Sphinx will go B, Molly long entrance and hide, Apex and Jax will poke mid, and generally force the CTs away with a molly after their smoke. Magisk will watch and take a main. Mimo Zyru defaults water, facing Khan and supporting Magisk. And for Zyru, it's worth noting he generally rifles, but when he does have the AWP, he calmly sticks to water anyway. Once the T side doesn't see any pushes from their positions, Apex will make one of two calls. He will call his team to rotate to a bomb site to execute under the 1 minute mark. Or they will do what I call a play, where Vitality will work one part of a map aggressively, meanwhile the rest of the players are holding their side, ready for re-aggression from the CT side. Let's begin with the basics by understanding what each role does. Starting with Sphinx, who is the B player. At the start of every round, Sphinx will do a house mark. These are going to be instant smokes, and you can check out the lineups in this not out here video. But if you want a standard lineup, here you go. Now, whenever Spink heads over to Long, he always throws a Molotov, forcing the CTs to stay inside of B, or forced to make a sound cue if they want to aggress. After throwing the molly, Sphinx will always play inside of this corner. Now the position itself isn't the best, but allows him to be safe from CT flashbangs and buys time for his teammates in middle to come over if he's getting pushed. Round 31 showcases this nicely, where Fizz tries to aggress into long, but Sphinx tucks in, dodging the flashbang and tries to punish the peak. Meanwhile, his mid play can peek out into long to assist when aggression is shown. Alternatively, you can have one of your mid players hold a flash from main just in case they push, but it's up to you to think when they might push. Now for the mid players. Vitality will tend to keep two rifles on mid rather than the AWP, where it might be on water depending if Zyru wants to pick it up. Typically at the start of the round, they will bounce a flash off the bridge, blinding the CTs peeking out from the door, since house is smoked off. At this point, their actions are decided based on the CTs util. If bridge is smoked, they will tend to spam it, making it difficult to peek out into canals or spam back. 
They may also boost in this table where they can see over the CT smoke. And trust me, this boost can catch players off guard. I would know. If the CTs threw a molly, they will just watch the bridge, waiting for anyone to enter their crosshairs. After roughly waiting around the 1 minute and 10 second mark, the mid players will throw a util to get them to fall off. At this point, Apex can call a play where maybe they push up in mid, or do something aggressive on the extremities, or use the bridge tick as a bit of a distraction while they rotate to a bomb site. Now for Zaru, who is the con player. Every round he will smoke off con using spawn lineups. Again, you can check out Nart's video for the lineups, or you can use a standard lineup. Afterwards, he will run down the stairs and might throw this nade, which could get some chip damage onto an A player. Afterwards, he will make his way down, holding the smoke in case someone got aggressive or spams for any damage. In round 21, the CTs will try to push bridge loudly, but Zaru's bridge spam nets in the trade while also holding water. Alternatively, if Zyru does have an AWP, he will just hold Con and Bridge, switching between the different angles from time to time, ensuring he isn't open to the latter. From what I've seen, generally the Con players tend to be more aggressive on the T side, wanting to forcibly take it away from the CTs using Util. But on Vitality, Zyru leans a bit more on the passive side when it comes to connect to control. However, there are a few scenarios where he does pressure Con. In round 18, he's gonna run right down into water, quickly tucking next to this wall, making it difficult for the CTs to spam him. Afterwards, he will bounce the molly off the wall to land inside of Con, reducing the space the CTs can play and forcing them to fall off or face him. If you do have an AWP, here are some ideas how you can use it. In round 31, Zaru is going to make his way into Khan after waiting for the CT's util. Then he places himself on this angle. Now it's worth noting a CT could be in this corner without him knowing, and he does have a molly to clear it. However, if he did use it, he will make noise when needing to rescope, losing that surprise factor. So he will take the risk. Staying scoped where Brokey walks into his crosshair but get shot from behind. In round 33, we can see Zywell make a similar play and gets the kill, but Twist from the heavens cooks him. The last thing I want to mention is him supporting Majisk for taking A main. He will typically throw a flashbang for Majisk to peek into A main around the 1 minute mark, and this just helps him clear an area without worrying about Swan being on the angle. Now let's take a look at Majisk who is the A player. Depending on where he's coming from, he typically throws a HE. From the stairs, he uses his lineup and jump throws once he hits the bottom of the stairs. This nade will land on any players on plat or doing the stairs nade from there. But if you are coming down from cat, you can use this one for camera that brings Brokey down to 70 HP and could be a cheeky triple nade idea for the mid round. Alternatively, you could use this one in Tenant for Stairs. After Heqing, he very commonly sits around watching men. There are quite a few different spots he likes to chop and choose from, but it's good to watch these extremities in the scenario of the CT's push as reaction to let's say a mid play. After waiting till the 1 minute mark for any reactions of any map control or players, they will take main with typically Majisk up front and Zyru supporting. The most basic way they take main is using a flash to get plays from close, pillar or holding the entrance in general off the angle. 
but most of the time they want to be extra diligent using a Molotov to do most of the work. Clearing the tight spaces, while also getting a flash from Zyrun. And the power of doing this molly every round is that it can be used to make this ED thing that is a default, where actually the players is grouping up in B or mid. It's not all just 2 to you on defaults. Quite often, they might run a 3 1 1, aka a heavy A default. There are two ways this will end. Either they will turn the heavy A into a full site execute through main and have Sphinx alert canals, or they will use it to split onto the A bomb site, and calling this heavy A from a spawn just makes it easier to organise the play numbers rather than doing it mid round. Starting with the exec through A main, Vitality will play somewhat of a 3 1 1, where Zyru, the Canals player, Magist, the Cat player, and Jax, the second mid player, will group into A main to slowly take it after waiting for the CT's util. Apex will either play in Canals, spotting bridge, or in mid, where he could throw some fake mid util to keep the CT's thinking. As the mid player, you can also use a set piece from Jax, where it restricts the CT's vision and their information. Lastly for Sphinx, he will do his default util for B, maybe throw something in mid, and make his way into canals when Vitality go for the exec, lurking and catching rotators off guard. Alternatively, you can decide to lurk into bridge after the execute, catching CTs going into camera. And I'll showcase the A site execute later in the video in the chapter about executes. Maybe once or twice a game, Vitality will call a heavy mid, where Magist, the main player, will move to mid to support Apex and Jax as they get ready to do something aggressive. Meanwhile, the extremity players are holding the edges of the map. Once the mid players have waited roughly 5 seconds, Magist will throw this first flash, intended to catch players on door and afterwards he can flash above door, intended for players around mid. In round 31, we can see the effects of this aggressive play. In round 31, we can see the effects of this aggressive play. And because the house is smoked off, it allows Vitality just to focus on door. At this point, it's Apex choice if he wants to split into A, regroup to hit A, or do something else. Similarly to heavy A, Vitality might do a heavy B in a game. In this, they will use their starting smokes to deny the CT information and line themselves up for a B pop, which again I will showcase during the executes portion of the video. During a typical default, once they're at the 1 minute mark, Vitality will either rotate to a bomb site or make a play. In these plays, they will try to push the envelope to either find map control to set them up for executes or kills. Let's begin with mid. Vitality have a free man mid play, where instead of just doing the normal bridge take with util, Jax will throw a camera smoke, a molly for door, and go out with apex, where Sphinx throws supported flashes for door, and one for mid. Once they take bridge, Vitality will shortly transition this into an A split, with util from apex, which I'll show later. Some other ideas you could use if you're solo or where pressure mid is Jax's util. Jax likes to throw a molly to force CDs back and either combine it with a lurk smoke for house or a smoke for camera. These smokes are great for denying information and can be used to make space. And in the round Jax threw the house smoke, Brookie tried disrespecting the util and gets punished hard when Jax was holding for the swing after his molly gets extinguished. Lastly, 
You could try to solo dry peek into mid. This is a very risky play, but with high risk comes high rewards. The way that mid is laid out can allow you to take fights in isolation. In this round, we can see Apex will peek into the doors where he wins the fight against Carrigan. But Brokey couldn't assist or trade from camera. Alternatively, he could try to isolate Brokey who is in camera by peeking through house, but I think there's only one way that fight is ending. Now for some B players. Vitality don't tend to target B as much as A, but it's still important you pressure both sides during your games. In round 32 against FaZe, Apex will call to lurk out B long, once Jack Smoke and Molly combo keeps the attention of the B rotator on mid, and Zyru gets the opening in con. With only one B player left on B, they will make their way onto the B side together, where Spinks wins the fight against Rain and the site as a reward. Lurking into B can be hard to replicate in matches, but something you can pull off any time in any round is a simple double dry peek into Con. This can be a bit risky, as the CTs only need to watch one entrance, but you do have the element of surprise. In this round, Vitality tries to give it a go against this Eco, but Rain just owns him. Now let's take a look at the executes. These executes will be used as the finisher in a round, where the T's think they have done enough to go into it. Let's take a look at their full sight execute. The full sight execute will consist of a molly on plat and sight, and a smoke for heaven. Afterwards, they're going to swing out, aiming to fire the only open area in camera and stairs, in which the CT should be blind from the flashes. Apex will do one set of util, where he will jump for a molly for sight, and double flashes team out, where they can swing out after it pops, affecting the entire site. The Orpa in Zyru will smoke heaven by aiming at this box above this corner and jump throwing. He will jump throw on Molly for Platt by aiming just underneath this line in the brick Afterwards, he can left click flashes, similar to Apex. This would have been a fast paced execute, leaving Broki, who was full blind and con, somewhat vulnerable, but the spam from Rob slows down the execute and makes Jack's peak a bit later than expected. However, because of the util use, they can focus their fights on stairs and camera, where they frag out and plant the bomb. Alternatively, if you do want a camera smoke, you can check out this execute from Heroic or have your B play for the Jack Shuto set, which blocks that camera, only leaving stairs and pillar to clear. And at this point for Spinks in the round, he can lurk around canals or bridge, cutting off rotations. If you want a quick pop for the A site, you can try this. This pop allows Vitality to suddenly explode out of main due to the pack walking up. In this, Apex will do the exact same util set as the last execute. His team will run out of main on the first flash and then peek out stairs after the second. While Vitality creep up in main, the second guy will molly pillar and the third guy will molly heaven on the run. This execute works really well, as Rops was not in position to catch it, and dies while blind. Another way to execute onto the site is by using mid. Vitality can use their play numbers in a default to quickly transition from a mid play into an A split. Since they have three near mid, and two in canals who can either pivot to A or B. In this split, they are going to take bridge with a camera smoke then quickly transition this into an A split. The smoke might seem a bit counterproductive as you are trying to get in there, but it should start to fade with 5 seconds left after you've taken bridge and mid. This can potentially catch your opponents off guard 
as you might think it's just a normal mid take rather than an A split. Once you have gained mid control, Apex will smoke off Palace and then will try to split. It looks like they will try to pop into the camera smoke with a flash from Zyru, but the split does go a bit wonky, but they bring it back. Meanwhile on canals, they will take a main, try to come in with the mid guys, but gets a bit delayed. Looking at the guys POV, we can see Jax will throw his util set to take bridge, and Apex will transition this play into an A split. Apex throws a molly then a smoke for palace which I think is a bit of a waste, so you could use your molly like this instead. Once the util is down, the idea is that they start going through the camera smoke with the flashes. But Rops' re-smoke causes a bit of issues. Thankfully, Rops gets spanned through the smoke, and Apex will run through it, with the main guys gaining the A sight. For Zyru, he will do his default flash for A main, then do this flash to get the mid guys into A. Once Magis is flashed in, he does delay himself by missing a molly for Pillar and seems like he wanted to run through with Zaru's flash. To help him get out, he will throw this Lurk Smoke, which looks pretty uncomfortable as a CT to deal with, since as a T you can go through Pillar or through the Smoke. Now for the B side, where Vitality has so many ideas and executes they can use on A, on B, they only used one type of execute. Yes, one. <laughs> this is a pop exec. They ran this three times during two different games. In this, two players will throw supportive flashbangs. Apex will throw one so it gets plays in CT and on the side of the site. Later, he makes his way over, smoking CT and getting the bomb down. Magis will do the other set, where it lands above the long entrance, affecting any player's close, either palace door or ninja. Afterwards, he makes his way out, designing his own pathing based on what's happening. The two entries will fall on entry pathing, where they will hug the right wall, aiming to wrap the site and fight CT. But unfortunately both die. And the third player will molly palace and go through sight. This ain't a bad execute, but the only gripe I have is that CT gets smoked off pretty late. But you can smoke it a bit safer and sooner, rather than being in the open by doing this. Do you want a way to get an aggressive opener on the CT side of Anubis? Check out this strat I broke down from Vitality, where they use a powerful pop flash from Bridge to get players out of B Con and peeking into canals. Apart from that, thanks for watching. Cheers, Ghost Academy, for the sponsor. See ya in a bit.